Alright, so I'm going to have a better look at the actual uh, Wombat machine itself. Now, one thing I did notice when I was looking at pictures is that at the bottom of this boom, it looks like there might be a pin or two missing, so possibly the swing ram isn't actually connected. We might be able to... Again, it might just be an adjustment of some description, or possibly even a lock. So the pins I was looking at, which are numbered 7 and number 23 in this particular diagram, what they actually do is you uh, use them to adjust the swing on the boom. You can actually change the slew so it goes more left or more right depending on what you need. In the handy colour photos that someone's put in the back of the manual, there's actually some details for it. It just says here, pull pin out to set boom swing either to left or to right, and they've put in a handy picture. Can't wait to try this out. It does look a bit like, from that hole there, it does look a bit like something's missing. But I've got a parts manual that has all, uh, all these bits, uh, I think I put it in the last video, has all these bits drawn in exploded diagram, so I can have a good look at that and find out. Uh, some of the rams are looking a little bit rusty up on the shaft, but you know, I'll have to rub those down, they're not getting rebuilt, I promise you that. But uh, that one should be alright because it's been housed away inside. The uh, one down there, the actual shovel ram's not good. But if I could brush them down and get the surface rust off, I mean, it's not ideal, but it won't hurt the rams not having the shiny chrome on the outside. At least it's uh, not in the short term, it won't. So there's all these bits of the old engine and things just kicking around in here, so... There is another cylinder head, so... If worst comes to the worst, and I can't get that other spark plug out. It's a little powdery, it leaves a scrape down, but it is actually a useful cylinder head. One. Yeah, there's one broken off stud stuck in there, but oh, maybe that's why. That's an interesting. Maybe that's why this broken stud here, the other part of that might be stuck inside the old engine block. Maybe that's why it got taken off in the first place. Who knows? I'll leave it in there for the moment. But it's usable, so I'm going to take that inside to stop getting any more weathered. You're also finding odds and ends of it. Wow. <laughs> That's not in wonderful shape. That's the top engine cowling. Glad to say the one on my one is uh, considerably better shape than that. What else is in there? So it also used to have an electric start on this one, and I can see on the engine where the electric start went. Yeah, so this is, I believe, just a starter. It actually feels, yeah, it actually turns. So that probably is good. But, my engine I don't think has the, has the ring gear on the firewheel that these that have to fit into. Plus, uh, also I'd have to take the entire blower housing apart and change it over because the one on my one doesn't actually have the hole for this to pop through. So I'm going to take that inside to put somewhere to keep it dry, out of the weather. But it's not actually going to get used in this one. Alright, <laughs> this is the old fuel tank. Once again, the one on my is in much better shape. I'm glad to say. I can't even get the cap to come off that. Oh. This might be. There it is. There's the pin I thought was missing buried in a pile of leaves on the seat. The seat's throwing up all sorts of little uh, treasures. So as you can see, when they uh, took this apart, they obviously weren't expecting to leave it apart for very long, because they just piled <laughs> underneath all this pile of leaves. They piled all these parts just into the bucket seat. Battery cable. Much There's a lot of nuts and bolts under here. It's all the bolts for cowling and everything. I might go find a jam jar in a bit and collect all these parts because there's almost certainly going to be something in there that's useful. The roofing nails probably not so much. I think these big bolts 
here, these big nuts, I'm going to have to find, who knows what to pass, so I'll have to find some. Hold the engine down because they are missing. Now the seat I've been given is in much better shape than this one, so I think there's a chance that I'll be changing that over. Artistic, I'll give them that. Oh, there's the, there's the rope starter. I think, I think I might need a new one. But I'll put it over there to go into things to go into the shed. Finally, there's cowling, which has been sitting there. Yep, that's the cowling. So that's where the air in intake would have taken, that's the broken kill switch. That was the choke and that was the throttle. Uh, I'm guessing that switch there might have been... Well that might have been, because this is the electric site one, that might have been the kill switch, that might actually have been the starter. Who knows. Uh, this carb, it looks like something's been living in it but it is all free. It's not as nice and shiny and clean as the, as the other one I've got. Not even slightly. It's also a different carb, actually, now that I look at it. It's a Zenith still. But it's actually a completely different carburetor. And the engine that was on here was an older one, so um, possibly the uh, newer carb is an update, but I'm still going to keep it because it's, uh, it's worth keeping that. Let me put it in the pile of things to go into the shed. It's like that. I mean, I might well uh, take this engine to pieces once I've got it off there. The pump, happily, is the same uh, size. The, uh, the output shaft is the same size and everything. The engine I've got will essentially just pop straight down here or straight down onto the four bolts to hold it down. It also has a slightly different magneto. But despite all the years of it sitting, crank and all the bearings and everything actually seem to have held up despite the fact that it's been pretty much open to the elements. So. Yeah, mine definitely doesn't have the ring start on it to uh, look that, hook that starter motor in, so uh, the starter motor's not going to be used on this. Apart from anything, I don't honestly see the need for it. I mean, this one actually had a rope start pulley on it as well as the starter motor, so who knows if that starter motor even works, because uh, the rope was here. Could have been that the battery went and couldn't be bothered to replace it. So I'm just not going to use it. But like I said, I might take it to clean up at some point and someone else will probably find a use for it. So it's a handy thing. Now, there is a bit of rust problem on the side of this tank, so I am going to have to do some uh, rust treatment. I'll take a photo of it actually. Go away, guys. I'm going to have to do some rust treatment on the hydraulic oil tank. Yeah, so I'm going to have to do some uh, rust uh, treatment on the side of this tank. Hopefully it hasn't gone right through. The steel in there still feels solid. It doesn't feel like it's about to go through. But I'm certainly going to need to brush all this off, give it some rust treatment, and then uh, yeah, paint it back up again. So having a, having a better look at some of the main controls. Let me flip the screen up. I keep on doing that. So having a better look at some of the main controls. Again, being as this is the first time I've had a chance to get a really good close look at this, there are a few more things than I was expecting, but we're well, not expecting it than I, was, I thought there were, but nothing too surprising. There's a lot of dirt, and there's obviously a few leaks and things. But then you also have a few surprises for like the foot brake pedal. When I press that, both the cables are free. This side I'm not hearing anything, but the other side I'm actually hearing the sound of the insides of the brake system moving at least, so that, whether it's just turning a cam, which isn't actually turning stuck brake shoes, I don't know. This side did sound a bit uh, 
bit solid, but we'll soon find out. This is the steering lever, which at the moment is uh, hard left, so it was forward for left, backward for right, and it locked in the middle. Uh, it looks a bit like a handbrake, but you would just pull it to the middle and lock it in place, and uh, then you'd go more or less straight. It was self-propelled on the front wheels. There's a hydraulic motor, you can't quite see the tin under there, and it turns the differential on the front axle there, and off it went. But most of the controls seem fairly free. These ones here, uh, there's one on the other side as well, they appear to be independent, which rather than... Yeah. At the front there's a uh, there's a foot and a blade, I'll take a better picture of it in a moment, um, which goes down and supports the machine. They appear to be independent. I so I decided to interrupt myself here because I went on to say a lot of things which simply weren't right. I was guessing at the driving controls and I got most of those guesses wrong. The uh, person that recreated the manual for me has actually put coloured photographs in the back of it with uh, penned in labels showing you the various controls and levers. Now from this picture you can see the lever right there in the middle is the one I was talking about. Now it does actually control both of the blades together, they're not independent as I said a moment ago. Uh, they are, they go up and down together on the same ram but there is an adjustment, there's a mechanical adjustment on the left hand one so you can wind it up and down a bit to uh, compensate for uneven ground. From this picture you can see the other lever I was talking about, the one that was confusing me. Now it's actually the forwards and backwards lever for the machine's drive. Uh, it looks a bit like you push the pedal in the middle in and then move the lever backwards or forwards in order to uh, change the drive. The valves seem nice and free. This one needs a little bit of work on the actual lever. I think it's pretty much just a case of tightening things up. Balls seem pretty good. Oh. I found a uh, <laughs> a broken set of needle nose pliers and a pin. Oh, I see. All oh, right, so that handle is not healthy. Hmm. Rather looking forward to this. It's going to be fun getting this up and running. My betting is that there's at least one hydraulic hose I'm looking at and thinking it probably, probably is seeing better days. A lot of them I'm looking at and thinking they're uh, too bad. Hmm. It's going to be fun. Okay, so one thing that these were able to do uh, is you could actually tow them behind a car or behind a truck uh, where they would be towed in reverse. So you would disengage the front wheel drive uh, and then the back, because it's steered with the back wheels, what you did was you pulled out this pin, dropped this tow hitch down. And as the tow hitch drove along, as you went around the corner, the tow hitch would steer the wheels. And so the wheels do actually appear to be moving quite nice and freely. Well, the steering does anyway. And the steering lever's moving with it, so well that's good. It all needs about three three tons of grease, but uh... ah. that needs a bit of work. It's a little bit rusty, but that's just a breather, so it doesn't matter too much. That's nice. I like that. Little brass. Uh... Brass filter to catch any bits coming out of the oil, uh, coming out of the oil can as you pour it in. Which is really good. Probably gunk that's falling out of the can. Okay, it's good. So I've just dipped the tank with this stick, and there's about two inches of oil in the bottom of it. Good thing about that means that the tank didn't leak. And there's no signs of a leak on it as well. There's no sort of obvious oil pouring out of the bottom of it, so it hasn't leaked from anywhere in the tank. Despite the fact it needs a bit of rust treatment, it's still a sound tank. So I'm happy with that. Just had a, bit, a better look at this. Uh, I'd obviously noticed the maker's plate, but I hadn't had a really good look at it before. But I've noticed it does actually say the address that's um, on the front of the workshop manual, although scribbled out in Barrow for some reason. Uh, it does actually say Cochrane's uh, Road Moorabbin on it. So 
I was right, this whole machine was actually only manufactured about 2Ks away from where I'm standing. So, um, yeah, it's probably never left the area. Now each time I come here I am going to try and make an effort to document at least one bit of the museum. So this is the front forward fuselage of a Boeing 737, I think it's a 200, one of the original ones. But it has the very nearly, I mean there's very few bits that aren't here, the complete cockpit of a 737-2. When I was about ooh, 8 or 9 my family went on holiday and we were flying in a plane almost exactly the same as this, a British Air Tours one. I flew over to Mallorca and uh, I was allowed to come up and stand when you could still do that. I was allowed to come up and, yeah, stand in the, uh, in the flight deck and talk to the pilots. Which is not something you get to do very often anymore. But any time you come here, you're allowed, obviously this is one of the cockpits that's open. You can just pretty much come in here and sit in here and play with all the bits and pieces. Some of the planes, the Viscount is one in particular. Yeah, uh, some of the planes actually have power running to the control system, so some of the uh, instruments are actually lit up and work and alarms work, that sort of thing. This one doesn't have that currently, but possibly someone will do something about it. I don't know, one day. But yeah, this is just one of the things that you can come here and uh, play with and enjoy.